Today we are here with Kate Lester, hey, Kate Lester Interiors, and Kate Lester Home. Yes. And tell us the difference between the two things. Yes, yeah, so um, about eight years ago, I launched my interior design firm, which is Kate Lester Interiors. Okay. And it was in a little tiny, tiny um, shoebox size. Well, first it was in my guest room, then it was in a little tiny office in Redondo. And now we've grown into a larger studio space in Hermosa. About two and a half years ago, we opened Kate Lester Home, which is our retail division. It's a home goods store, and we sell everything from furniture to pillows to candles to towels, it's amazing. You should come in and check it out. Eight years ago, you started a design firm, basically. Take me before that, like yeah. where does that come from? Has this always been your passion? No, super random. I was not one of those people that's like, oh my God, I was rearranging my room when I was a kid. <laughs> you know, I like, I was like doing my homework. That's what I was doing when I was a kid. I was going to be in finance. I, I went to business school at USC. I wanted to work in corporate America. I want to have a briefcase and I wanted to have high heels and be important and make money and be climbing that ladder. So when I did that after college, I realized I absolutely hated it and that I didn't feel like I should have to ask a man if I could go to my kid's soccer game. Like the logistics of working in corporate America were something I think I wasn't really aware of. Like, you know, you have to come in at nine and you have to leave at nine. <laughs> so um, I thought it just wasn't conducive to the lifestyle I wanted for myself. So I decided just, I'd always had like vibes for being creative and that I was going to go out and be a designer and that I, you know, I thought I could do it. I thought I had great taste and, and people had always complimented my spaces, but I had never actually like built a home or anything. You right. know, I was 25 years old. So I just went back to school. I found a great architecture, interior architectural program. Okay. And I figured if I'm going to do this, I want to be an expert. So I'm right. going to go back and get that knowledge. And at Otis College, and I did like a night program there, and I bartended at Sharky's. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, gotcha. So, you know, super South Bay Loke. Yeah, and I was going to say, you're not local unless yeah, you've worked you're at Sharky's. Exactly. It was great, and it was really humbling experience having a degree from USC and then bartending and like hosing down bar mats at night and right. being like a promo girl, putting people's wristbands on. Once I, you know, had gathered enough knowledge and felt like I was ready, I left that program. I didn't even finish it. I left that program and went to work for a designer in Hollywood. Okay. Yeah. So you worked for somebody else for a little while. I worked for a couple of designers and kind of worked my way up. And then it was time once I had worked my way up to be like someone's number two for a couple right. of years. I knew the ins and outs and I figured I had made all my mistakes on his dime and so <laughs> I little did I know I was gonna make way more mistakes on my own dime, but it's okay. Yeah. But I felt ready and so I I was tired of commuting and I was like, all right, let's do this. So right. we opened uh, Kate Lester Interiors in our guest room. My husband was like, you have to make $1,000 a month in order for me to like support this. And, <laughs> and so I and did. And you didn't want to work for a man. <laughs> right? <laughs> he was like, I'll give you six months. Yeah. Um, and then you got to go back to work or you got to be a stay-at-home mom. And that right. was like the worst thing in my mind. So I was like, all right, I better do this. <laughs> So six months later, we had an office space and two employees. So it worked nothing out. Nothing like motivation. Exactly. Nothing right. like that kind of motivation. Explain to me briefly what your design firm does. Like who's a right. typical client? A typical client for us is somebody who purchases a lot or they purchase an old home, a teardown. Most of the time, they are they already have an architect on board. Maybe they even already have building plans. Maybe they've got their contractor on board, Maybe sometimes not. And they'll enlist us at the very beginning, which seems preemptive kind of. Like most people don't realize that we want to be on board before or even during the building permitting process because what if we look at your interior plans and we think your kitchen could be better? Or if you knock out this wall and move this, this could make this larger. A lot of times the architects do a really great job on the space planning and the overall aspects, but some of those interior nuances that we're really familiar with, right. they just don't aren't interested in right. per se, right? So that's where we come in and we really study the interior and make sure that the windows look gorgeous but that you can put a nightstand underneath right. them or that you have enough closet space. Laundry rooms are always a favorite because most of the time they're designed by men and used by women. So there's always like a little bit of difference there. So it's a great opportunity for us to come in and make sure our clients direct needs and, and the functionality of the right. house is, is working. So we want to be on board as soon as possible. So I would say like Growing up in this business, being around construction, a new project kind of always started with an architect. Right. But I kind of feel like the way the world has changed and the way people have changed and clients, 
Like it's almost like they have what they want it to look like, the end product. A lot of the clients I'm around follow people. You know, right. It's such a much more visual world we live in. We got a lot of clients in. from Instagram, right. right? On social media or Pinterest or coming into the store. Do you find like you're getting approached before an architect nowadays? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we are. And, and that's okay. I mean, we have referrals of all the people we like to work if with. If you had right? to pick though, like should, or like if you were to advise a client that's going to build their own house, should they find the architect first? It doesn't Not matter. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. You, you build yeah. your team and make sure, you know, my biggest suggestion would be make sure that you're working with people who maybe have worked together before. I think it's gotcha. always more smooth if the, the architect knows the designer, who knows the contractor. They don't right. all have to know each other, but maybe so there's some sort of like symbiotic Synergy. relationship. Yeah, happening. Yeah. It's very smooth when it goes that way because I can say, hey, remember that weird detail we did at this job? Right. I want to do that, but different. So. It's so much easier when you already know each other right. and, and how you work, especially if you're billing by the hour, you know, you're right. you're more efficient. So an architect would, you know, lay out a house, right. lay out a floor plan, probably, you know, based on the customer's direction, client's direction, general style, mm -hmm. right? Just a category. For the exterior, right. usually, yeah. Yeah, and so, and then where do you lay kind of your expertise or services on top of that? Usually once those plans are, I would say like 95% finished and they can go for structural and things like that, then we can take them and say, okay, well, if we move a wall here or we move a wall there and it's not structural, we're pretty much finished with the architect at that point, right? Like they've called out all the certain things. We can make tweaks on the windows with the contractor. We can make tweaks on the bathrooms. So usually we have some freedom after the fact and the architect most of the time isn't that involved. They're they're done in their arena right. and and they'll come and visit the job site hopefully and hopefully right. like what we're doing and you know and then we can collaborate on the materials for the outside right. things like that. So usually it's a collaborative effort as far as materials and exterior and things gotcha. like that. Gotcha. And so you have the floor plan, you have the general layout, mm -hmm. you have the general style. The next big component I would probably guess is like cabinetry. So we call this phase one and phase two. So if okay. you think about it like this, if you took the house, flipped it over and shook it, right. everything that wouldn't fall out is phase one, right? So it's your lighting, your cabinet hardware, your cabinetry, your paint colors, any of your applied moldings, your interior doors and windows, your maybe your flooring, tile, all of those things, countertops. Right. So everything that's part of the bones of the house, we call, those are the items we select first. That way gotcha. we can we can present those, get approval from our clients, then send that down to the line to the contractor so they can start working on bidding that while we develop the furniture and, and everything else. Gotcha. So we're not holding up the process because we do design everything at one time pretty much. So we, we want to make sure as we get approval for it, it gets filtered down the pipeline so that we don't hold the project. So next question, do you, would you say you being involved and having a client able to make decisions could shorten a timeline of building a home or add to the timeline? I would say that at this point, usually our clients are, thank God, they trust the process. Gotcha. So I would say that, you know, 95% of the time people are coming to us and saying, I do what I do, you do what you do, I like what you do so far, right. so I want to see your ideas. Gotcha. And maybe we make a few tweaks here and there, but they're not micromanaging right. at this point, knock on wood. So I would say the decision-making process, we don't give people a lot of choices. There's right. one concept. Gotcha. And we can tweak things within that concept, right. although I would be mad about it. Um, <laughs> um, but it, it's not, you know, three different options for everything because then how does that all work together? Sure. So it doesn't work like that with us. And most of the time you should just listen to us because we know what we're doing. Right, of course. Taking a small step back, are you a specific style? Like, do you do you only do certain things? How do I you know. I mean, tackle I guess, that I topic? guess that's probably a better question for people who, you know, in my mind, yes, there's some, there's some things that sort of weave through my love for vintage, my love for having the spaces have color and personality. Right. Um, but, you know, right now we have a super modern project for Bachelor. Uh, right now we have a very traditional project for a family. So I think we take that look of like curated, chic, and we, we stretch it, right? right? We can stretch it to the left to be more modern. We can stretch it to the right to right. be more traditional. I like that because then that pushes our boundaries. Yeah. So I do want the homes that we design to reflect our clientele first and foremost. Right. And then if people can can see that sort of Kate Lester vibes inside there, then right. I'm okay with that. Got it. But I don't want them to be like a stamp every time we design a house. Right. You, know? you don't want to be in a single lane. Right. Yeah. Right. We want to be doing something different every time. Right. You've got a very good design business going. We do. You've got the store going. Right. 
where, like, what's next for you? Oh my gosh, I don't know. Actually, <laughs> more stores probably. Um, gotcha. That's in the plans. So more stores, maybe a furniture line, maybe a TV are, show. Are you, whoa, okay. Okay. Good for you, hey. I think I'm really passionate about the lack of solid design curriculum out there in right. design schools. So that's something I'm really interested in, in how do we fix that? How do we create curriculum that sends people to design firms who are qualified and ready to go? Right. The girls I'm getting are amazing and they're hard workers, but sometimes they don't have a lot of real world applicable experience that you would get like if you were a business person and sure. taking business classes. Right. They're not, they're like getting color wheel. They're not getting like all of the applicable tools. So I think we want to set you know, our youth up for success. So that's like, I'm Set passionate some standards. about it. Yeah. 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 That's great. All right. So let's, let's talk about the design world. Okay. Uh, I'm really only kind of used to what's going on around here. Right. In the South Bay. It's kind of a lot like my business. Right. It seems competitive. Okay. It seems like clients have some options. Absolutely. It also seems like there's varying degrees of like service qualifications yeah. services. experience styles totally and and so like how do you do like if you're a client if you're you know potential client right. how do you delineate Good between question. somebody's kind of doing this either part-time or as a hobby sure. or on the side versus someone like yourself right. and you know does the old cliche like you get what you pay for apply right. that kind of stuff well since i'm expensive yes yeah it applies <laughs> I think it depends on what you're looking for. Right. So I will tell you that we do turn down work, which sounds like absurd, but we do it because I only want happy clients, period, right. okay? And if I think that our fees and our value is way more than what someone needs, no one's gonna be happy in the end, right? right? They're gonna be mad because they were like, well, I only needed this and you, you are too expensive for that. And I'm gonna be like, well, I don't get dumber if I just do one room. So, you know, I think we wanna make sure that we're matching our value with what people's needs are. Got so it. I think when you're out searching for a design professional, make sure you think about that, right? right. Maybe you wanna hire someone like me who has like all the bells and whistles, but you only need your guest bathroom remodeled. Right. So use some of our imagery as inspiration, but hire someone whose specialty is bathroom remodels. Right. You're gonna pay a lot less, and you're gonna be able to, to have probably more say and, and you know, be able to, to say, you know, to give them some direction and things like that. Right. So I think you want to match your expectations with your budget. If you're building a new build, please, please, please hire someone that can read building plans and that works in AutoCAD. Right. Um, in my opinion, you For need people someone. people that don't know, what's oh, AutoCAD? Oh, AutoCAD is architectural software. So what we like to say is we speak contractor and we speak architect, okay? so bilingual. We're bilingual, we're trilingual, because <laughs> we also speak designer. Um, so you wanna know how to move a window. You wanna know what a load-bearing wall is. You don't wanna look stupid when you say, well, I wanna move that bedroom all the way over there, and then the contractor's like, yeah, that's, you can't do that, that's a sheer wall. So right. you wanna know all these terms. Know your stuff, everyone will respect you more. So I think if you want to have, if you have a really large sort of ground up project, I think there's a value add in hiring someone that can communicate with the builder and the architect, can put together a packet for them, interior elevations, which are drawings, right. um, tile layouts, schedules. There's a lot that goes into building a brand new home and the more organized and efficient you are, then it's it saves you money in the end. So I think that's my suggestion. And there are a lot of really great actual interior design firms in the South Bay. Right. Um, there's also a lot of great uh, decorators, right? People who right. come and just judge your living room. Sure. So know the difference between the two and make sure you're you know, searching accordingly. That way you're paying for just what you need. Got it. Yeah. So talk to me, you kind of touched on remodels a little bit. Yeah. Talk like you obviously would do a remodel, we do. right? Sometimes we do, we do like a- What's uh, the biggest difference? Well, I mean, not a lot because usually people that hire us for remodel, we take the house to the studs. So a lot of times it's just so they don't have to tear the whole thing down, right? right? So we're saving some money There's or we're playing the game, with. right? Yeah. Maybe we want a grandfather in that fireplace. So gotcha. usually the remodels are quite large scale. Yeah. The difference between a remodel and a new build probably isn't all that great if you're doing a large scale remodel. Right. Um, you're still doing the schedules, the drawings, you know, there's just more surprises, right? So you open a wall and you're like, well, that's weird. There's a fireplace in there. I thought this was the <laughs> kitchen. Like, right. so you never know what you're gonna find or maybe you have big plans for something and then you open the wall and you find out structurally that's not gonna work and your client doesn't wanna like 
reshore the house to make that happen. For so sure. you have to amend things where in new construction you have a lot more freedom and right. you can you should be able to do whatever you want. Right. You know? Yeah. So if you plan accordingly. But remodels are fun and people love them some before and after pictures. So <laughs> that is like people's favorite thing on my Instagram. So right. I have to do some remodels so I can keep right. that. Because if you do only new construction, my my before is always a dirt lot. So Right, of course. So if people love a bad Mediterranean that turns into a beautiful Spanifornia. The Spanifornia. The Spanifornia. You're quite a bit of a Instagram personality. I like Instagram. Do you find that that adds to your business? I, it didn't for a really long time, but it was fun for me. I right. like, I mean, I'm in the business of pretty pictures, so what other platform would be better for me, right? Totally. Plus, I like, I I have sort of a interesting personality where I'm not for everyone and what? I'm a little <laughs> opinionated and like a lot, as my husband says. Um, so, <laughs> so I think that that translates well sometimes. We're interviewing him next. Oh, way. perfect. Okay, okay. Good. Um, he'll tell you the truth. Yeah. So I think like it's a great way for me to kind of showcase my personality for those people who don't, who just see the pretty pictures. Design is filled with like a lot of really amazing blonde ladies who are perfect and I'm sort of the, the like the other side of that which is I love vintage I love old things I want to show you you know the crappy stuff about interior design I say bad words I wear ripped jeans so I like that I've created sort of my own niche here yeah, I'm a local I surf I skateboard like I like that I don't have to be in a certain box with like a pencil skirt and a pop collar and right. you know hairspray <laughs> I don't even own hairspray <laughs> so I like I like that I can I think you can have really nice things and still have a really fantastic, sporty, like functional life. Right. So I'm I'm trying to bring that to the masses that you know you still can have nice things and use your rooms. I have to give you a lot of credit. I mean, you are a kind of across the board, like really true to yourself Thank and you. like what you want out of life and like out of your business, and it's really impressive. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I give zero Fs. Is really yeah. what my I was speaking at a conference one time and these girls were like, I just want to get like Kate confidence where I give zero Fs. And right. I think it takes a long time to get there where you think like, you know, I didn't always feel this way. I didn't always feel like I knew where I was and where I wanted to go. And I think it's liberating when you can get there totally. and say, this is the path I'm carving right. for myself. Maybe that's not going to work for you. Maybe you don't like it. That's fine. Right. Like I don't have to please everyone. And that's super liberating. Just kind of taking a, a different turn here, yeah. but like talking to other entrepreneurs, yes. other designers, Love it. other kind of, but like that are not as far along in their sure. career as you, you know, giving zero Fs could mean like not getting a paycheck. Yeah. Okay. Right? So let so me where clarify do you find that about the zero Fs yeah. for a second. Okay. <laughs> so like a lot of people say in the beginning, you know, I only want big projects. Well, honey, so did I when yeah, I first started course, it. Okay. Yeah. But I was schlepping stuff in my car. I was like pulling out lampshades. I was cutting the fabric myself. So like, Rain it in, like read the room and know where you are, okay? So you're gonna have to put in the work. Like I For said, sure. you're gonna have to, you know, design some spaces you don't like to get, and then you restyle them, get the picture and move on. So, you know, know your yeah. audience, get your photographs, pay good money, right. get, you know, get your portfolio going and then, you know, move forward and then you work your way. This did not happen overnight. This right. is like 15 years in the making. Right. Like I just started getting a paycheck like right. a few years ago. So, <laughs> you know, this was not like a right. day one thing. So I think it's really about, you have to really want it. Because totally. in the beginning, it's super not glamorous. Right. It's actually not that glamorous, period. Like, there's drywall on my toes right now. <laughs> it's not that glamorous, period. You have to really want it in order to make all of this worth it. You know, digging yeah. through, like, a pile of rugs at a sweaty flea market is right. not glamorous. That's why my clients don't want to do it. They want to pay me <laughs> to do it, you're right? Doing it, yeah. So you have to love it, and yeah. you have to find a family that lets you do it or goes with you or right. supports you. So. Right. That's not for everyone, you know. Got it. How do you get most of your clients? Referrals. Okay. I mean, really fantastic, wealthy people know each other. Right. And we're lucky because we have really wonderful clients who who just continue to refer us. And I think happy clients bring you more happy clients. And we're lucky. I think, I think sometimes Instagram, we've gotten some out-of-state projects from Instagram, okay. which is really crazy to me but cool right but word of mouth always I mean that's how I hire my architect or pool guy or or a hair person or right. anything right is you ask your friends so totally. if you're lucky enough to get in a really great circle of people then that is really beneficial 
thank you so much You're for welcome. doing this. You're it was amazing. very fun. Yeah. You can uh, follow us on Instagram. Yes. Your Instagram I'm is? I'm KL Interiors. And I'm at O'Connor Property. Yes. Uh, you have way more followers than I it's do. Okay. So, you know, I'll probably gain like five. So that's cool. <laughs> Uh, yeah, stay tuned. We're doing a couple projects together. Yeah. So um, maybe I'd, you'll see us making cameos on each other's grams. I would love that. Yes. Love to have you back. Okay. Thank you so much Thank for doing you. This. All right. I think it's we're been fun. Officially out of film. <laughs> <laughs> I think we broke the camera. <laughs>